Another genius. Hi, my name is Ephraim Kirkwood. I'm the editor on the project. I'm Ilya Rumens, and I'm one of the producers of the film. George Morton and film subject. Go, go, go. I'm Gary Gunn, the composer. I'm Jeff Martz, uh, executive producer. <laughs> Hi, I'm Anusha Zuman, one of the producers. And the director, Rose, is not feeling well this evening, unfortunately, but I think there's some other people who know a thing or two about the film who can fill in. Um, so could you just tell us, Roger, and maybe some of the other producers, the genesis of the project, how Rosa came to tell the story of George? Sure. Um, Rosa, um, I, be, I think she, did she read the, an article in the New York Times, George, um, about you and no, her friend read yeah. what friend read the article anyway she she started making this film um, and was filming with George for a couple of years and I was screening one of my films in Amsterdam where I live part part of time and she said you know I'm working on this project and she said I have this teaser and would you look at this teaser and I get approached all the time to look at stuff, and I just kind of dismissed it. And then a couple weeks later, I think George sent some cosmic vibes to me or something, because I was sitting in my apartment, I was like, I've got to look at that teaser. And I watched it and was completely blown away by the story, the, the artistry of the filmmaking. And I called Rosa, and I said, I invited her to lunch. I said, I want to produce your film. She broke down in tears because she had been struggling and working on this film, you know, for no or little money, like we often do with documentaries. And I brought her to Tribeca Film Festival in New York. Um, we pitched it to a few people, and there was a bidding war, and the rest is history. We won South by Southwest. We won San Francisco International Film Festival. We won the Sheffield Film Festival. Uh, it's... Atlanta Film Festival, it's been a dream come true. And all of everyone down the line, except for Ilya, are, these are all first time filmmakers given the opportunity as African American brilliant minds create brilliant work like this. So your, the film centers themes of the transformative power of art, which we've seen before in the cinema, but it's a powerful theme, and you know it's one that bears repeating. Can you talk about what you want this film to add to that conversation? Any of you can take that or several. Don't be shy. Um, well, throughout the film making process, it was very much uh, uh, in inner journey for me, and I learned a thing or two about healing through creative practice. And so I have this this privilege to have this craft that allows me to mirror what's going on inside of me, and somehow reconcile and work through that on my canvas and the work that I do as as an artist. And yeah, it was very honest in that sense, very raw, being able to, to um, deal with these parts of my psyche that I'm trying to work through. Like, for example, you see my nef nephew there, he's much sweeter than you see me, me representing him with his black hoodie on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, yeah, if you change the SH of his name, Treshawn, out with a V, you have a different name. And it was me trying to say something else because he's much sweeter than, than how he appears there, uh, honestly, to this very day. Um, and so, yeah, it was me working out those aspects of myself in a lot of instances. I think a lot of us are sweeter than we're typically portrayed 
in this culture on the screen and in the media. And I'd like to give a special round of applause to the DP to capture for capturing some of the beauty <laughs> of people. Can you talk about, you know, lighting? Some of the, just the cutaway stills of, of people, you know, with the, the sparkler or just in silhouette looking out the window are really transcendent. So can you just talk about what you strive to capture when you're, when you're shooting people, especially black people? Um, okay, I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> um, so the, the, the important thing for me was um, shooting black people in a dignified way. That was the most important thing uh, in this project. Uh, because it really matters where you, you stand and where you position your camera or the angle that you take and the lighting. And because the film was about Master of Light, this guy about painting inspired by Rembrandt, um, we thought like, okay, maybe that's also a nice approach to approach the, the cinematography uh, in terms of lighting. Where's the light coming from? Um, we, there's only one scene where I use uh, artificial light, and then I think that's the scene where he's busy with the photos, and everything else was natural light, and uh, we tried to shape it by, you know, this, uh, windows closing uh, curtains and looking where the light is coming from, and that sort of things. But it, the, the, the basis was like dignity, try to portray black people with dignity. Beautiful. And Ephraim, we know that a lot of documentaries are made heavily in the editing room. Um, can you talk about, you know, your collaboration with Rosa and how much leeway you had or if there's anything you did that you felt, anything you added in terms of the, alt, the, the story we see on screen in terms of your editorial um, input? <laughs> uh, sure. I'm also very nervous. <laughs> um, yeah, I think with editing, it's, um, as Jürgen was saying, like dignity was a big part of it. And just capturing the, wanting to honor George's vulnerability and, and, and that dignity shows up in editing with how we pace out the film and let people um, show their, their full selves. And for me as editor, I'm trying to make those connections um, with my own life and with the subject and finding things I think is important as a black editor. And um, <clears throat> aside from the technical aspect of it, you know, we just had a lot of discussions, me and Rosa, about, you know, the film and the themes and, and wanting to bring that to its, to its full potential. So. E Ephraim is a genius as well. And we, when we did this series called High on the Hog for Netflix. And Ephraim, it's really Ephraim's magic as an editor that made that series really come to life and would be the success that it was. So George, can you talk about what it was like having a film crew following you around for the period of time that it was and you know your relationship with Rosa because it's pretty intimate you know this film it's not just uh, arm's length away They're really in your personal life so can you talk about the experience of being that vulnerable on film and just having so much your private life put on screen yes um, well I felt every emotion I, I felt the intrusiveness of it I felt um, the humility of it, you know, being able to be an instrument because, you know, the, we all have a story and this is so many people's story. I felt the rawness of having, like, going through a real healing journey at the same time. You know, I was going to therapy consistently throughout the whole process, going, going into those trenches 
and dealing with those real emotions in real time. Um, and so what you see on the screen here is very, very honest and um, kind of unscripted in that sense. And I'm sure everyone, just about everyone on the stage here has felt um, some of my, my transference of that frustration and difficulty at certain stages throughout the creative process, if I'm being honest. Um, it was real. I, I honestly, I didn't know what I was getting myself into um, going in. I just was all in and I'm grateful for it, but maybe if I was, if I had more sense, I probably, I would have been, been a little more careful because it, I mean, the therapy stuff is really deep, you know, because you, you become self-aware and, you know, you got the people around you that constantly remind you of, of who they think you are based on what they think they know. And you're trying to, you know, become a butterfly. It's like, yeah, I know, you know, you, you, you're used to me of being this cocoon, but like I'm, I'm trying to transform here and, and that process and, and the constant reminders and, and you know, it was isolating at points. It was, it was just deep because it was honest. Mm. Um, and yeah, thank you. Yeah, well, it takes a lot of courage and it's rare that we see such a three-dimensional three picture of black men, especially a formerly incarcerated one, you know, tend to be so limiting in our views. So thank you really for sharing your full self with us. Thank you. And I'll just talk. I'd like to have everybody on stage say something. So I'd like to hear from the producers. If you could talk about um, just what you feel like you brought to the, to the film and what you hope other people to get out of it. Oh, thank you so much. Well, um, I think what we brought to the film was to make sure that everybody felt safe and secure. Uh, it was amazing also to have the trust from One Story Up that Ilya and I as producers were, you know, could kind of like do our thing. And uh, uh, we, we got a lot of um, freedom in that, which was amazing, and support. Um, it, the film was shot during COVID, so that was, of course, you know, uh, for everyone, very uh, chal challenging times. And I think like what was already been spoken to, to find a combination um, to show life, but also to show, you know, systemic issues that are very prevalent and that we should not forget about, but still also show that in an artistic way and not uh, as I've, I've been taught by uh, One Story Up, you know, you don't want, it, it, it should not be like broccoli. It has to be art, you know, it has to be still interesting and beautiful to look at. So I think that's, I hope, I think that's what we uh, really try to bring. That would be a good t-shirt. <laughs> and it was also special to work with Bobby, the team we brought together, that was also really a joint effort and it worked out amazingly well. I mean, we really had a great team and I think you can feel it in the film. And I, I, I want to thank you guys because they helped us emotionally, mentally, everything throughout this whole process. Without these powerhouses, we, we, we wouldn't have Master of Light. Gary, can you talk about the score, which is really beautiful and haunting, yeah. but not overbearing? And he's nominated for IDA Awards, Gary Gunn. Hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even know what IDA was. In terms of that, so it's like, oh, that's cool. No, but I, I, I think for me, I remember first seeing the footage, and you know, it, it's a very difficult thing to go introspective like that. And, and to take that kind of road. So for me, I wanted it to sound that way. And I mentioned to George, I kind of cheated and used it as like a own personal reflection, like my own kind of musical journey into my own trauma and everything, you know, everything else going on from my past. So it, to me, I kind of took advantage of it, used his story to, to, to dive deep in, into myself, you know, on this musical journey. And then the other thing I'll say is that whenever you're scoring black people on film, 
it's very, very tricky because we have this lineage of film music that you got to kind of honor because it works and it, and it communicates certain things to certain audiences. But I'm always trying to put things that sound like they come from the world of the subjects. And it's a very, it's a, it's a very tricky line, you know. But hopefully that, that resonated. In some way, you can hear that. So, and last but not least, Jeff, uh, you work with Roger to bring these type of stories. When you're looking at things that you want to uh, get behind, what what leaps out to you? Well, when we started, you know, what we wanted to do was was films that were meaningful that that uh, that resonated with an audience that uh, just things that, that made a difference so you know Chuck in this case and uh, and uh, you know we wanted to uh, well I'll speak for Roger here Roger wanted to pay it forward you know it's just I mean uh, after he won the Oscar for the first time um, he was uh, actually sleeping on our couch, uh, my wife and I and, and, and our, our young son, because he couldn't get a job. You know, it's just like crazy when you think about it. Uh, and for him, it's really important, and for me, you know, to, to give opportunities to like this bunch of incredibly talented people here on the stage and, and some of the other projects that we're doing. And, uh, it's like incredibly meaningful to us. So that's what we try. Can I just acknowledge um, our supervising editor and not CD? Who I, I stand up and not stand up and take a bow. Yes, she's amazing, amazing force behind so many films. And John. You stand up and take a bow to John, her protege, John Strait. Stand up, John. Yeah. <laughs> and our assistant editors are here also. Francesca oh, is here. Uh, Laura Carpas is here. And Bruce is here as well. Francesca, stand Francesca. up. Francesca. Francesca. Laura. Yeah. Bruce. The question, I'm just going to repeat it for the cameras. Um, was what did you have to let go of in order to give yourself fully to this project? So funny. I, my immediate answer came to me, but I, I just wanted, I just, something I thought about. I remember one time I was riding through Amsterdam with Jurgen on the back of a bicycle, and he was like, dude, you're holding on too tight. Just let go. Like, like, <laughs> and I mean, I don't know. It seemed like he was he he was trying to say something else because he he had he knew, and, and it was right around that time when we were about to go into the editing stage, and I, I was still, I hadn't let go yet. You know, I was still full of this idea of what what this film was about and what, you know, we, we, we came to say. And, um, and it was important. Everyone here made me realize how important it was for, for everyone else to contribute for me to let go. And so that was important going into the editing room. I just, I just understood it. I, I respected the brilliance of all these minds up here um, and whatever it was that brought us together. And the fact that I, it just takes a village, you know, and they were all whipping me into shape, and I just knew, you know, okay, we got the amazing Inat CD, we got Ephraim Kirkwood, we got Jurgen Rosa, who couldn't be here today again. We got, I can't emphasize her brilliance enough. Um, I was in good hands, and, and they would take the time to reassure me of that over and over, um, I wanna say, the therapy really helped. Um, and it was something, I don't know if it was Rosa or Anusha, but I'm gonna give it to Anusha on this one. Her husband's a psychiatrist and she they found my therapist 
for me in the film. And I was in a stage where it was like, I don't need therapy. Like I'm, you know, I'm reading all these books. I, I you know, I know all this stuff. Why, why would I need that? And it's one of the best decisions I ever made. These, these are the things that really help. For sure. I think we have time for one more question. George, where can we buy your work? Um, uh, well, yeah, uh, Ilya was just saying I should tell you all about my mom. She's she's living in Atlanta these days, and I got her in a shelter, and we've been working on her healing journey and therapy as well. And she is the subject of um, paintings that I'm working on, and I'm hoping to build out uh, an entire exhibition around a lot of the themes in the painting, or I'm sorry, in the film, and that, that's been ongoing. And so I've been in communication with a few museums. I'm hoping that we can have it run in tandem with the, the campaign of, of the film in some of these museums, our local museums and galleries, hopefully. Well, I'd like to thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank HBO for sharing this film with us. 